Hi everybody. I'm talking to you today in a sort of somber, melancholy, not joking around mood. There's time for joking around and then there's time for having a, um, a deeper understanding about what life is all about and that's what I want to talk to you about today. Because this coronavirus is bringing up a lot of issues that a lot of people have never thought about, like the the whippoorwill nature of nature. Why is it that some people just die and other people don't die? Why is it some people just get a little cough and a, maybe a, a headache and other people are dying by the tens of thousands? And it's an interesting thing to think about, like the serendipity of nature. What is the nature of nature? Why is it that some of us are alive and well and sequestered in our homes as I am and talking to you? And why is it that other people are taking chances and going about their duties and wearing masks and, and being the service people and risking their lives and being okay about that? They could say no, they could not show up, couldn't they? But some people feel they have no choice. And so, the, the thing I want to talk to you about today is not just to entertain you and not just to joke around some more. There's plenty of other people doing that by the hordes. And that's good. It's good to laugh. It's good to have um, an easy way about feeling about life. But also there's something more intensely, profoundly immediate happening right here. It's about are we really ready to go with the way nature has in store for us? And by nature, I don't just mean a biological mechanism that could be a coronavirus mutating or being discovered anew or killing us by the tens of thousands. I, I mean the force behind all an existence which can also be called nature. Some people call it the divine. Some people call it the sacred intelligence or even God, Allah, Jah, the force, the source, so many different words. Whatever you're comfortable with, it's real. And I think each and every one of us has to have a connection to that deep place within us that we feel is bigger than anything that can be explained rationally. In the 12-step program, we call it higher power. And other teachers um, along the way call it presence or the self, different words, different ways of explaining it. So what does this mean about how to go through what we're all forced to go through, which is the imminency of perhaps losing our life or perhaps watching other people lose their jobs, losing the security of knowing that there's a, a regular schedule to be adhered to, whether you were a student in school or a, a, a job that you can't get to because of it being shut down or being forced to have a job uh, endangering yourself and your family. It all boils down to what I call surrender. Surrender meaning not that we've lost but that we are ready to give our full attention to what is. And it's a beautiful process, surrender. It's really the first step in a spiritual life. And when I experienced it myself, I had come to the end of a long battle with not surrendering, not being ready to say, okay, I'm gonna give up my power. I had to have many experiences of near death, physically, mentally, and finally, the final one where I was ready to surrender totally was a spiritual death. And this happened because of addictions, 
My story is about addictions, but the good thing that I want to share with you is that when you are ready to surrender, and hopefully you're not as stupid as I was, that it took so many different ways and such deep near-death ways of surrendering that I finally came to a place to, and I realized that the only really important way of seeing life is to see that this is a spiritual experience. And we are in our human bodies, which I call temples. These are the temples of our soul, these beautiful bodies that we are given to nurture, to care for, to exercise, to feed well, to be in good company. These are the temples of our soul. So when we surrender to that idea that we're not just human beings, like, you know, like a bunch of little organisms of some sort, like a herd of wild buffalo just roaming the earth, doing our thing. No, we are, each one of us, a connection to this source, this higher consciousness that is so hard to define that most scholars call it ineffable. It can't be spoken about. It can't be written about. But many of us try. And I myself, I, I attempt to do it in books about stories. I believe stories are the way that speak to the human soul about our journey to the spiritual side of life. And all of us have that choice. Are we going to deny that side of our life or are we going to embrace it and really work with it and know that it is the true part of our life, the true meaning of life in general. And when we finally surrender to the truth that the spiritual connection that we have in life with our own life, that's when we start experiencing joy and bliss it's been described in many ways through many traditions that we experience the peace, the inner peace that goes beyond all understanding. So the surrender is a process and some of us can do it more easily than others and some of us resist it and some of us are in denial about it and some of us intellectualize it. Oh, there's not enough you know, statistics or facts. But those of us who have had experiences of going to the very brink of losing our physical connection with life, dying, and realize that the choice is to surrender to the fact that this is a spiritual life, those of us who've had that choice are grateful, so grateful that it came in that package of a choice. Now for me, I had these suspicions that there was more to life than what really appears to be. Through meditation, through experiences with psychotropic drugs, through going to the brink of life's experiences, I, I pursued all those different alternatives, but it was really by being at the side of my father's passing through this life, that he gave me the gift of showing me, by actually telling me that we don't begin to realize what is happening here, except when we get to that place, like he was just about ready to leave his physical body. And he saw, maybe it was a vision, maybe it was uh, just, a glance of where he was headed for as he was leaving his body through cancer, he saw that we are all connected. All of us are connected by an invisible, but yet already discovered force of energy, the Higgs boson, the physicists call it. And it's kind of mockingly called the God principle, but it has been detected. If those of you who want to check it out, just look up the God particle, Higgs boson. 
It actually is a source of a particle of subatomic subatomic energy that we all have that everything has in existence so far they've found it in everything even coming from space so when my father as he was passing saw this and experienced it but he was in a trance-like state and um, and he came back into his normal state as he was leaving his body and I said to him, Dad, do you remember telling me what you said while you were out there? He said, no. What? Tell me. And I said, you, you actually said that, isn't it a shame? It takes some of us so long to understand that we are all one, that we are all one. And he said, really? I said that? I said, yeah, Dad. That's what you said, that's what you saw, that's what you experienced. And it gave him such comfort that when he finally did let go of this thing called life, he went with a smile on his face knowing that there was peace. Because it, this life is just a continuation of whatever came before it and whatever will go after it. And it's okay to surrender to even the process of what nature has in store for us. So it's a beautiful thing to surrender. Maybe you can think about that in between all the videos you're watching and movies and books you're reading and all the funny little things you do online to keep occupied during this quiet, reflective opportunity we're being given en masse. The whole world is being asked to chill and think about some other things that maybe we would not be thinking about if we were not forced to be home right now. So it's just a thought I wanted to share with you among all the many wonderful thoughts that uh, I expels upon on the podcast that I share with my beloved husband, Carter. If you want to check out Z-Lord Podcast, the link's in my bio. And I wish you all a beautiful moment of surrender. And just realize that all is well. We are all one. We are all going through this together. It's not just you. It's not just anyone. We are all going through this together. I said my love and good health to everyone. Om Namah Shivaya.